Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is even another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, but this time it is going to be an updated version of some Mermel Link combos. Now this is going to be two updated versions of a combo that I had posted way back in like last August when we had multiple Firewall Dragons, and that was Neptibus plus Teus making two Firewall Dragons that were used, plus dropping Mulan Glacia, plus having Bahama Shark and Toad on the field, and basically the combo was only usable at that point with those two cards because of multiple firewall dragons but now we have some better card pool options to access in the form of the nightmare cards specifically nightmare griffin being a huge one and basically there are some combo sequences that change that still yield about the same outcome so what i'm going to show you in this video is two different combo sequences with different starting plays the first one is neptibus plus teus plus any water monster in your hand and then the next one is more specific but it yields a better outcome which is neptibus plus teus plus aqua spirit but basically the gist of both combos is that both combos end on a board of Firewall Dragon, a Nightmare Griffin, a Searched Abyss Sphere with a Heavy Infantry in hand to operate as a trap card, and then Bahamut Shark plus Toad on the field. Both of them have that same sort of ending field, but with the first combo you do not get to have your battle phase during the next turn because you link away with Mulan Glacia to make the play possible, but with the Aqua Spirit play you actually don't link away the Mulan Glacia and you're able to drop it much later in the combo sequence. But I'm not going to spend too much time explaining that here, I'll explain that more in detail as I'm showing you each respective combo. But so, without wasting too much time, let's get straight into it. I've got my hand queued up here, and like I said, this one is going to be Neptibus plus Teus plus literally any water that's discardable off of your play structuring. So, from here you're going to normal summon Neptibus, and you're going to use Neptibus to send a Dragoons, and then add a Dragoons, and then Dragoons will trigger its effect once Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro's incredibly long animation process stops and you're going to add Mermel Abyss Megala. Now from here you're going to trigger the Teus, discarding the Dragoons, summoning Teus, Dragoons will trigger, and then you will get your Teus search, and you're going to search for Abyss Gunned, and then Dragoons is going to search for, in this instance, Mulan Glacia. You're going to search for this very early, because of the fact that we're doing this with just another water monster to discard, this is something that we have to drop earlier rather than later for this combo to work, because it's very hard for you to get specifically down to five water monsters in your grave without multiple firewalls in the game at this point so something to consider but anyway you're going to link away with the two monsters on your field into underclock taker you're not making mrs radiant or not mrs radiant uh miss starboy the the water mrs radiant uh you're not making that card because you need to make sure you hit proper numbers of water monsters in grave at specific times and if you were to make Miss Starboy, then you're going to risk messing up the sequencing and flow of how that needs to work. But so anyway, so you link away with the Teus, putting it in Grave specifically, and then you're going to trigger your Megalo in hand discarding Gund and the random water that you had, and the Gund is going to trigger and the Megalo is going to trigger Gund bringing back Teus, and then the Megalo searching for Abyss Sphere. Now the reason I'm searching Abyss Sphere is because if you're able to end any of these combos on Heavy Infantry in hand, which is very easy to do, then what you're capable of doing with Abyss Sphere is that while it's set, you're able to flip it up, summon Mermail Abyss Pike or Abyss Turge from your deck, and even though its effect is negated, you can still activate its effect, discarding a water monster as cost, so you will discard the Heavy Infantry from your hand, the Pike slash Turge will be negated, obviously, by the Abyss Sphere, but the Heavy Infantry will activate and resolve on a new chain, popping a card. Now, this has been more powerful in the past than it has been currently, but it is now currently more powerful now than it's been in the past year or so because of the fact of how this interacts with Nightmare Griffin. Your opponent is going to have to make link monsters on their field in order to get link arrows pointing at things to put monsters into a linked state to even be able to activate their effects. And so if you're going to use Abyss Sphere and the Heavy Infantry interaction in a way that removes Link monsters from their field after they commit resources into them, that means that you're going to be locking your opponent out of further monster effects and it's going to require even more resources for them to try and play. So that is why you specifically do that. But so for this, at this point we're already at 5 water monsters and we're never going to be at 5 water monsters in Grave for the rest of this combo at a point where Mulan Glace would be live. So what we're going to do is we're going to special summon the Mulan Glace now and go ahead and use its effect and take two cards out of our opponent's hand. And then we're going to link away with it. So, with this combo sequence, you do not get a battle phase during your next turn, but that's perfectly fine because of the way you've set your board up in most cases. I haven't really had a problem playing out this combo and not having a battle phase the next turn and still not winning the game. Like, I've, I haven't been having that problem uh, because you've got access to multiple things like multiple Totally Awesomes, 
uh, the Abyss Sphere interaction that I already just discussed, where you just discard infantry and make Griffin really, really problematic to deal with, all that sort of stuff. But so from here, you make number 42, Galaxy Tomahawk. I could see this card getting banned sometime, uh, because it just generates at least four tokens for free every time you summon it. Uh, it's kind of weird, kind of wild. Let's go with it. But so from here, you're just going to link away with two of the tokens into Proxy Dragon in the center zone, and then you're going to link away the Decode Talker and the token for Firewall Dragon. Because Decode is a three, the token's a one. It makes good sense to make that Decode Talker, because of the fact that like you were going to leave the Moulin Glaze on the field and only get three tokens, whereas if you make the Decode Talker, that's worth three monsters, rather than the Underclock Taker being worth two. And you get an extra token in the slot that you freed up. So linking away with the Moulin Glaze essentially means that you like gave yourself extra monsters. Uh, but so from here, you are going to link away with the last token into Link Spider above the Firewall. And then you're going to activate Firewall Dragon's effect, bouncing the two Dragoonses that are in your graveyard back to your hand. And so now from here, we're just going to start extending things around. So from here, what we're going to do is we're just going to make any Link monster that we want to be a stepping stone. So we'll make Nightmare Phoenix. And we'll just make it here, just to trigger Firewall Dragon's effect, especially summon one of these Dragoons from our hand. And then we're going to link those two into Troymare, or Nightmare Griffin. The Proxy Dragon and the uh, Phoenix are going to make Griffin. And then the Firewall will trigger again, special summoning this Dragoons from hand. And now you're going to place this very specifically. You're going to make this Bahamut Shark up in the extra monster zone. And then you're going to detach Dragoons off of that to summon uh, Totally Awesome down by the firewall. Now why are we doing it specifically in this placement? The reason we're doing it here is because if we reverse the placement, if we put Bahamut Shark down here and summon Totally Awesome up here, as soon as you negate a card with Totally Awesome, that means that this zone is now free and your opponent is free to summon any monsters that they want into that zone, thus being linked to Firewall Dragon, thus turning off Griffin. However, if you summon it in this order, that means that this is up top, this isn't going anywhere unless your opponent outs it, meaning that there's no link arrows pointing up over here, this, uh, this totally awesome is over here, ready to negate a card and do whatever you want, and then from there you're pretty well off. So, at this point you've got the Abyss Sphere in your hand, which you obviously just set. You've taken two cards out of your opponent's hand with the Moulin Glace, you're going to be negating a card with totally awesome, so they're already playing on theoretically three cards, and then they have to commit those three cards into monsters that can be used to make link plays before they can even use special summon monster effects and at that point griffin is going to be very problematic especially when you're backing it up with abyss sphere into pike to discard this infantry and pop a card on their turn and so you have a space open so that you can do that you'd summon the pike slash turge here so that it can physically activate its effect due to griffin's uh restriction uh it's floodgate like effect essentially and then if your opponent has not really committed to the board, or even if they do. Like, if you use the Pike Turge play off this Sphere during their turn, the Sphere dies, and that dies in the end phase, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, and then this, this space is open, and you're able to use Bahamut Shark again to summon another Totally Awesome here, or another Totally Awesome down here if this one got used. Uh, so it's very easy for you to play through the fact that you don't have a battle phase on your second turn, especially considering that you could easily just recur cards with Toad if they go to Grave, if you're not forced to use the Abyss Sphere, you're able to use Abyss Sphere as a play extender to, again, make more cards and out cards on your opponent's field in ways that make it to where they have very few options on their next turn, and then it comes back to your turn again, and then you have a battle phase, things like that. But so, I'm going to reset this real quick, and then I'm going to show you the expanded combo, which is Neptibus Teus plus Aqua Spirit, which leaves Moulin Glace on the field, actually gets you a draw, puts Ibli on their field, and then also uh, ends on Abyss Sphere, Heavy Infantry, Toad, and all that. So I'll show you that one right now. All right, so like I said previously, this combo is going to be Neptibus plus Teus plus Aqua Spirit. It's slightly expanded, gets a better result, allows you to drop Moulin Glace later in the turn so it stays on the field as a body, and you also get a battle phase during your next turn, which is definitely ideal. But I should note that you don't have to play Mermel like this. As you see, these combos take most of your extra deck to perform, but the extra deck was never really that important in Mermels anyway. Uh, but it's still one of those things that some people do sort of get kind of queasy about when you use most of your extra deck for these combo sequences. Uh, but that's perfectly fine. You don't have to play Mermails in this way. Uh, it's just one of the things that I've been playing Mermails a lot, both Sekka builds and both non Sekka builds. And I've been finding that both instances of this combo sequence uh, resolving have been basically auto wins uh, because, like, your opponent just can't deal with it. But so that's that's basically the point I want to make is like, you don't have to play Mermail like this, but. 
in terms of my experience with it, I recommend it. But anyway, so at this point, this is where we're going to deviate from the previous combo sequence. We summoned Neptibus, send Dragoons, add Dragoons, discarded the Dragoons for Teus, Teus added the Gund, and now off of this Dragoons, the previous combo sequence, when we didn't have Aqua Spirit, we added Moulin Glace so that we could drop it early. We're going to be able to drop Moulin Glace later in this combo sequence because of Aqua Spirit's Graveyard Manipulation. So, if you had any other Graveyard Manipulating card that removed a water from Grave, like Monster Reborn or uh, Salvage, uh, or stuff like that, you could structure your play around in the same sort of way, uh, instead of having Aqua Spirit. Uh, but basically, what we're going to add here is we're going to add Neptibus to our hand instead of Moulin Glace because we want to make the same combo possible, with the Firewall Dragon nonsense. So from here, we're going to make Underclock Taker again, using the Neptibus and the uh, the Teus, putting it in Grave, and then triggering Megalo, discarding the Neptibus and the Gund, summoning the Megalo, and the Neptibus will trigger summoning the Dragoons, and then the Gund and the Megalo will both trigger. Uh, Megalo is going to add Sphere again, and then the Gund is going to bring back the Teus. Now this combo sequence is pretty wildly different in terms of sequencing from the previous one. The previous one was pretty straightforward, uh, but this one is definitely much, much different. But so from here, we're going to go into Decode Talker with these two to uh, further establish monster resources on the field like we did previously. And then we're going to make the Galaxy Tomahawk again. And then use it to summon all of the Toki Tokis. Uh, so, token here, token here. I really wish there was just a button that like said summon all tokens in defense position. But I guess I can click one or, more, one or two more times. But so... What we're going to do here is instead of making Proxy Dragon in the middle, we're going to make Troy Mare, Nightmare, Phoenix Man. And we're going to specifically make Phoenix. Uh, you could make Cerberus and work on this side of the field as well. It's really up to your personal preference. You can make Goblin uh, and like trigger it by discarding Abyss Sphere and maybe Normal Summon again. This is very open-ended and flexible in terms of what card you can insert here. It's not important. Um, I just usually use Phoenix because I like keeping Cerberus in the extra deck because Cerberus outs more problematic cards in terms of like monsters on the field sometimes if your hand is good enough you're able to get rid of the ibli that you give them so that you draw a card it's an extra resource stuff like that things to consider things to consider as per usual but so now you're going to make firewall dragon again over here and then you are going to link one of these leftover tokens into link spider up here and then activate firewall returning not your token uh, but you're going to return dragoons and dragoons back to your hand yet again so now from here, we want to get rid of these things on the field. You can make uh, Cerberus, but I prefer to make Proxy Dragon uh, over here next to Firewall. This was so that you could vacate your extra monster zone. And no, I'm not going to use Firewall Dragon here. I prefer to save it for very, very late uh, in terms of uh, keeping board presence in good order. But So now from here, you're going to link whatever Nightmare you summoned. It's important that you summon a Nightmare. So like I said, Cerberus, Goblin, or uh, Phoenix. It just depends on what side of the board you want to work on. Uh, and what resources you want to maintain as possible options for later. You're going to summon Nightmare Mermaid. Again, we're not going to use Firewall here, but we are going to use Mermaid, and we're going to discard Dragoons. Here's your daily PSA of that Mermaid is a water monster. Like, whoa. <laughs> so, we're going to draw a card off this Mermaid, and then... No, I'm not going to use this Ash. Thanks for, thanks for the prompt, though. And then the Dragoons is going to trigger because it was discarded off Mermaid. And here is where we're going to search the Moulin Glaze. So now at this point, we have six waters engraved. There's the one Dragoons, and there's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five here, and then the Dragoons down here is six. And so we need to get this Ibli off the field before we can summon Aqua Spirit or the Moulin Glaze. So what we're going to do is we're going to do just a simple step up in links. We do not want to link away with the Mermaid because, again, unless we had Salvage as the other card in our hand, then you can link away with Mermaid and adjust the play because then that'd be seven waters, and then Salvage would add back Gundam, Neptibus, and then you're at five, right? It, you, you know, it makes sense. Um, but uh, in this play specifically, we're going to want to link away with Ibli and the Proxy Dragon into the Trigate, just making a simple link three, uh, just so that uh, we don't lose any uh, resources on the field. So now we're going to trigger Firewall and we're going to trigger Ibli. Uh, Ibli is going to be summoned over here, and this Firewall is going to special summon the Dragoons out of our hand over here. And so now at this point, we get to special summon this Aqua Spirit, just banishing an Eptibus. It doesn't matter. There's two of them in Grave. And then from here, you have five in Grave, so you can special summon this Moulin Glaze. You're going to special summon it in the farthest left zone. It's pretty important. Uh, and then from here, you're going to construct some Link Plays in a way that makes our board the best presentable board we can make. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Nightmare Griffin with the Trigate and the Mermaid next to the Firewall. 
And so now you get these two fours, which are able to structure up into Bahamut Shark. And again, putting the Bahamut Shark up in the extra monster zone so that we don't have anything like totally awesome that leaves the zone and then makes your opponent be able to bypass Griffin by summoning things there. So now you're going to do Bahamut Shark attaching the Dragoons, summoning totally awesome. Summon it next to the firewall just for the fact that you could possibly trigger firewall's effect. Um, and like summon what was added back off awesome. Uh, it's perfectly optional uh, if that's like the play you want to do, but still possible. And then from here, you're going to use Dragoons to search for your heavy infantry. And so now you get to set the sphere. And again, you've set up the same sort of board presence that we had in the previous, com uh, the previous combo sequence, where Abyss Sphere can summon Pike or Turge from deck, depending on what your build is playing, which can then discard infantry as cost. It can activate because it's a special summon monster, but it's being summoned in Griffin's arrow pointer specifically. So it's perfectly fine. That's why you wanted to summon Moulin Glacier over here to keep this zone open. Again, comparing, uh, combining the Abyss Sphere play with Heavy Infantry with Griffin is very potent because your opponent's playing on four cards. At least one of them, or I say at least one because they could play a card that requires them to discard or do something as cost, meaning that then Totally Awesome negated essentially two cards or took two cards away from your opponent. But at least one card is getting eaten by Totally Awesome. And then you've got the Sphere that is either going to be flipped to use with Heavy Infantry to out your opponent's monster that they're trying to establish plays with under Griffin, or you're just going to be able to keep it and flip it during next turn and summon something like a Megalo from your deck and then just swing for ignorant amount of damage. And this Ibli is still on your opponent's field as well. So depending on how your hand was structured, like if you had like a Nimble monster in it or like frogs or whatever, you could definitely change how this plays out. You could make Totally Awesome with materials under it also, uh, like just as an extra thing. You could link away the Bahamut Shark and then put a Toad here and have a Toad here and just negate with that Toad last. Like, there's, there's a bunch of different things and factors that can go into uh, how this plays out. You could have a play that has more monsters in hand to make a Cerberus over here, pop Ibli, draw a card, and then link away into, uh, into Griffin. You could discard Sphere off the Cerberus to pop Ibli, draw a card, and then you could discard a card to set Sphere off Griffin and then draw another card. Like, there's a bunch of different expandable options you can do here, but this is just what I wanted to show you. It's just the bare minimum of what you can do with these three card interactions. Technically, two card interaction in terms of the first combo sequence, it was a two card combo that just required one of virtually every other monster in your deck to be in your hand. And then this one was a bit more specific, but it yielded a much better outcome because of the fact that you get a battle phase next turn uh, and you draw a card. So like those little things might not seem like they matter too much, but they are actually pretty huge. But like I said, like you don't have to play Mermels like this. It's just the way I prefer to play it. I like to be able to use the least amount of cards for the most impact um, in terms of like what this sort of play can do uh, and like Teus Neptibus is just a really broken combo because of Galaxy Tomahawk So you're just able to do things like this and every time I resolve this I have very few memories of losing With either of these combo sequences even though I didn't have a battle phase in some of them because of linking away with Moulin Glaze uh, But so yeah, there's there's multiple different expandable options there because it is Mermel's so it's a very flexible deck and you don't have to play the deck like this as I've said but this is what gives me the best results in terms of what I've played, and extra deck has, has never really mattered to Mermail anyway, especially recently. Uh, so, just things to consider. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe. As usual, if you're new here, definitely subscribe if you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content and stuff like that. But links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Twitch page if you want to go follow that and get notified next time I go live for the live streams that usually happen at least once a week. I've been a little lazy recently, but I try to keep that schedule up. Then definitely go check that out. And if you want to support the channel directly and help keep making videos like this possible to dedicate time into doing, then definitely go check out the Patreon link in the description down below. No matter how large or small, any contribution is greatly appreciated, and it's a fantastic method that keeps this channel going uh, through tough times and stuff like that. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.